we are here to really pray radically, to pray individually, to pray for our personal concerns, to pray for our nation. And the truth is this, we are confronted with so many issues in this country. There, we have war in Marawi, we have war on drugs, we have war in, in, against NPA, and we also have wars in EDSA, C5. <laughs> and to some of us, with all of these issues, we also neglect to pray for our country, but instead we, we complain, we give uh, several suggestions to so many people who are not really concerned also about or who do not even have the authority over the problem. So, and to some, we are also experiencing personal wars, wars at home, and wars against sickness, sicknesses, which somehow we tend to forget to really pray for this nation. Yesterday, Pastor Peter gave us this verse, and this is something very important to all of us. Look at what he said. First of all, then, I urge that entreaties and prayers and petition and thanksgiving be made on behalf of all men. God is telling us, first of a primary importance to all of you Christians, it is very important to every one of us to really pray for on behalf of all men. Look at the words for prayers, entreaties, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving. God is telling us this is something very important. Before anything else, pray on behalf of all men. And look at what Father said, for kings and all who are in authority so that we may lead a tranquil, quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Be honest, how many of you wants to have a tranquil life? a quiet life. And look at what God is telling us. In order for us to experience that tranquility in life and quietness in life with all dignity, with what the Lord is telling us to pray for our leaders. He did not just say to pray for our country or for our nation, but we are to pray for many nations because it affects us. When we pray for our president, he also deals with the leaders of China, leader of of, of Russia, leaders of so many countries, and that's what God is telling us, pray for kings, for all leaders, for all those who are in authority. Amen? And look at this. And the reason why we need to pray for our country and, and the Filipinos and also for other countries because this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God, our Savior. You see, God desires for us to have a tranquil life. God desires for us to have a quiet life. But his solution is for us to seriously take into consideration praying on behalf of all men. Now look at this. And who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? Because for there is one God and one mediator also between God and man, that the man Christ Jesus. You know what, what, what Paul was saying here, what was trying to convey to us is this. You see, if men are not reconciled with God, they are not saved. Obviously, they will be at war with the Lord. And if they're at war, they will be at war to anybody. Yesterday, Pastor Mani emphasized on us that if we have a right relationship with God, God listens to our prayer. But if we have a wrong relationship with people, obviously, it will also hinder our prayers. Tama? But all, most of the time, the truth is this. If we are not really right and rightly related to God, it would be very hard to relate correctly with other people because we will always be selfish. And look at this. And the reason why God tells us that Jesus Christ is the only way for us to be reconciled to God, no other way, not religion, not this church, but Jesus, look at what he said, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. Jesus is the hope in order for us to be reconciled with God. And once we're reconciled with God, we have such peace with God, obviously it begins to, to feel the very need, that, the very burden that God has for all people and for them to know Jesus. And look at this. Therefore, I, wanted, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. Now, the reason why Paul said this is because sometimes even we are already 
okay with the Lord, we have the great tendency that we do not fix our relationship with other people. And God said, no, I want you when you pray, make sure there is no dissension among you. Okay po ba yun? Now, you, you know, if you read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 6, uh, verse 7, you would be surprised. Even for husband and wife, if the husband does not treat the wife properly, his prayers will be hindered. Okay po? Kaya tingnan niyo yung katab- asawa niyo. Sabi mo, you know why your prayers are not answered? Because we're starting to fight now. <laughs> now the, re- the truth is this. God desires for us to be saved. Now listen to this. This commandment was given to whom? To the church. Because the hope of this nation is in the prayer of the church. Let me repeat. The hope of this nation is in the prayer of God's people. That's the only hope we have for this country. Now, this is why God wants us to radically pray for this nation. Kindly tell to the the person beside you, pray radically for this nation. We need to pray for this nation. Dr. A.T. Person said, there's never been a spiritual awakening in any country or locality that did not begin in united prayer. You see, I just read a book uh, written by Dr. Edwin Orr. He was a leading scholar of revivals who published detailed books about evangelical awakenings. And this is what he said. In the wake of the American Revolution in the 17th century, there was a moral slump. Out of 5 million population, 300,000 were drunkards and with 15,000 of them buried each year. Profanity was the most shocking and shocking kind and women were afraid to go out at night for fear of assault. Bank robberies were a daily occurrence. Now listen to this. What about the churches? Different denominations were at its lowest. One was losing one members, uh, more members than gaining. Another had their most wintry season. Yet another with no young person taking into the fellowship in 16 years. Pastors were resigning because they could not find any reason to work anymore because they had no members. They were losing everything. Now listen to this. If the church is weak, obviously the nations will be affected because we are the salt and light of this world. Nasusundan po. Now, ito ang problema. Tingnan niyo pang nangyari. So how can we change now the situation? If this is the case, now let's go to the school. In the liberal art colleges showed that in Harvard, there was not a single believer in the entire student body. In Princeton, a much more evangelical place, there were only two believers in the student body with only five that did not belong to the filthy speech movement of that day. Students rioted, they held a mock communion, put on anti-Christian place, burned down the Nassau Hall at Princeton, forced the resignation of the president of Harvard, burned a Bible in a public bonfire, Christians were so, so few on campus, and in the 1970s and 1790s, that they met in secret like a communist cell, kept their minutes in code so that no one would know. Their condition was worse than ours. Tama ba? At least us, we have the freedom to worship. We have so many Christian students in school. We have not seen Bibles being burned. Tama? But you know what they did? Here's what happened. They spent time in prayer. Every Monday, every first Monday of the month, they would gather just to pray, just to pray. In fact, one of the Baptist pastors, whose name was... uh, Isaac Bacchus, when conditions were at their worst, addressed an urgent plea for prayer of revival to pastors of every Christian denomination in the United States. Knowing their difficult situation, all the churches adopted the plan until America, like Britain, was interceded with a network of prayer meetings which set aside the first Monday of each month to pray. When the revival reached Kentucky, it encountered wild and irreligious people. Lawlessness prevailed everywhere. A Scots-Irish Presbyterian minister named James McGreedy settled in Logan County, Kentucky pastor for three little churches. He wrote in his diary in the winter of 1799, for the most part was weeping and mourning with the people of God. 
So Mark Reedy was such a man of prayer that not only did he promote the concert of prayer every first Monday of the month, but he got his people to pray with him at sunset on Saturday evening and sunrise on Saturday morning. Then in the summer of 1800 came the great Kentucky revival. 11,000 people came to a communion service. And Mac Brady had to ask help from different churches regardless of denomination. And you know what came out of that awakening? The whole modern missionary movement and its societies. Out of it came the abolition of slavery, popular education, Bible societies, Sunday school, and many social benefits accompanying the evangelistic drive. Friends, God will move if we pray. Because the regeneration of lives is not our work, it is God's work. You see, friends, no matter how we try to teach people morals, as in teach them how to live with, the, with proper values, if there is no regeneration of heart, a change of heart, which only God can do, nothing will ever happen. Nothing will ever change. You want to see change in this country? We need to advance the kingdom of God. But before I teach you on how to just to give a quick way of teaching you how to pray for this nation, let us first hear a testimony of how God transformed a life because of the gospel truth. Let's call on Remy Claudio. My parents introduced me to Jesus at a young age, but I grew up without a personal relationship with Him. I regularly attended church, but I was also sinning regularly. I learned to use marijuana when I was 13 years old, and sooner became a drug dependent using shabu and other drugs. I lied to my mother to sustain my vices and even asked her for a business capital to start a small business, and little did she knew that it will be used to sell and push drugs. I eventually got in prison because of that. My mother died upon learning what happened to me and why I got in prison. It was in prison where I felt extreme loneliness that I had never felt before. It was in prison when I started asking myself, will prisoners really get better in jail? Will I, get, will I ever get better? What if I don't improve? How about my family? These are the questions I was seeking to answer. One day, I was invited to attend the CCF Biahe Binigyang Laya Nesus jail ministry inside the Marikina City Jail to listen to God's words. I was surprised by the pastor's testimony who was a former drug dependent but now he's standing before us and preaching God's words. He shared us how the Lord worked and changed his life. At that moment, I asked for forgiveness from Jesus Christ and surrendered to Him as my Lord and Savior. I also learned to love God's Word and I applied it in my life. Ever since I got out in prison, I joined the Biahe Jail Ministry and continued to attend Bible studies. The Lord also blessed me with a job. I praise God because even though I have failed him countless, time, countless times, he still showed me his amazing love, grace, and mercy. He gave me the privilege to serve him as the ministry jail coordinator in Pasig City Jail. I am now leading a group of men who are also leading their own small group. It is my heart's desire to share the love of Christ and the hope that our brothers and sisters inside the different city jails may have in Jesus. I am Remy Custodio, a former imprisoned drug pusher, 
but by God's amazing grace, I am now a minister to the prisoners. To God be all the glory. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Remy. You see, sa, sa mata ng Diyos, sa mata natin, salot na to sa lipunan eh. Tama ba? Alam nyo kung ano sa English yung salot? Alam nyo? Hindi ko rin alam eh. <laughs> He is a liability to this nation. But because of the gospel of truth, because of the saving grace of Jesus, He became a contribution to the nation. Tama ba? Yun yung ating inilalaban. Yun ang ating ipinagpe-pray. So we pray for this country to come to know Jesus. We need to pray radically. Now, listen to this. How can we pray? Very, I would, just quickly, let's, let me teach you how to pray. Pray then in this way, going back to the original. Radical, preach, radical prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Look at what God is telling us. Instead of focusing our concern, our eyes on our country's concern, you focus on God, the greatness of our God. Understand who God is. You see, unless we see God bigger than our problems, we will get discouraged praying. We will, not, we will stop praying because the point that I want us to all understand is this. This is not just a prayer for tonight. This is a prayer that we will continue to do. Are you following? Because we need to fight for this country in prayer. So unless we see the greatness of God, no, we've been doing praising God, adoring God, tama? Like using the alphabets. And I hope that we would not be tempted just filling up the alphabets or the letters like A. Awesome. The question is this, yes, God is awesome. What is that to you? What does it mean to you about your worries, about this country? You see, friends, let me just share with you how I do it in my personal prayer time. I don't do ABC because I'm not, I'm not good in English. I do abacada. No, just kidding. <laughs> what I do is I try to remember and to look back again from Genesis up to where God will lead me as I pray. For example, I would praise God. You are God who created the heavens and the earth. Out of nothing, you commanded everything and it, became, it came to pass. So just imagine, while you are praising God, you begin to understand, Lord, thank you that nothing is impossible with you. Now going to chapter two, for example, Lord, you even care for us. You know our needs. Adam did not even recognize his need, but you did. Now you understand that my father, our father, understands what is best for all of us, what's good for us. Remember that and in chapter 3, Lord, thank you that even when they fell, you were there to cover their shame. You were there to cover them with, clo you closed them, oh God, that you would, and you, it, you even gave them a promise of solution to their problems. Di ba? Ang sarap! Now, when you begin to see the problems we have, Lord, paano ba itong problema namin sa bansa? Then you go to Exodus, Lord, thank you that even Pharaoh could not do anything against you because you are more powerful than anybody else in this world. Friends, you, you bring the, the, the scripture, the revelation of who God is in your prayer. And I'm telling you, you will never stop. An hour would not be enough. It must come to a point that everything will become a shadow in the light of God. Yung bang lahat ng biglang, yung worries mo biglang, pak, wala. Biglang tapang mo, asan ang demonyo? Ganyan. Yung bang, yung wala kang takot. Kasi bigla yung, yung, yung fear mo na palitan ng reality ni God. Then you begin to ask for God's kingdom to come. If there is an excitement to see God because of seeing Him of who He is in your prayer, you begin to say, Lord, we're excited for you to come. And that, that because you, have, you are not yet to come, I pray that your rulership will truly come to our country. That's our prayer. That every one of us, then you begin to pray, Lord, thy will be done on earth as it is now. You know, this prayer is very serious. It will really change our lives. Let me just give you a quick illustration. I used to buy pirated DVDs. And I was praying for this country. Lord, I pray for the economy of this country. And you know what God told me? He impressed upon my heart. Then stop buying DVD, pirated DVD. Wow, what's the relationship? Because that's economic sabotage. Okay, Lord, I will not buy pirated DVDs anymore. And I followed the advice of a Christian brother. Download it. <laughs> but again, the Lord rebuked me and said, don't download it. And you know, even my son, I praise God for my son. I asked him once, why, why don't you just download songs from the internet instead of uh, subscribing to Spotify? 
learn to be, you know, to, to be careful with how you use your money. And you know what they said? Dad, I prayed and God doesn't want me to steal. And I said, you're right. <laughs> then I began to realize this. Sometimes we want to see change in our country, but not at our expense, always at the expense of others. We want change in our country, but as long as we are, not, we, we are untouched. But friends, if we are truly praying for God's will for this nation, the change starts with us. The church, and you have to listen to God. Lord, what do you want me to do to fulfill your agenda? Now listen to this. Prayer is partnership of heaven and earth. And let me end by saying, by sharing with you about George Washington Carver. Because of his great love for his fellow African-American, American, he prayed to God, Lord, give me the secret of the universe that I can inspire my fellow African-American. And you know what God said? The universe is too big for you. But I can give you the secret of peanuts. And at that time, the, the cotton industry was down because of bow weevil. And God gave him wisdom and discovered 300 ways to process peanuts. There's a peanut oil, peanut flour, peanut every, and all kinds of peanuts. And even peanuts comic strip. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's that part of it. <laughs> but the point is this. God opens the window of heaven to tell us His secret if you are willing to partner with Him, both in prayer and in your life. You see, friends, I challenge you. Just two things I want you to commit. First, commit to come here 30 minutes earlier every service, every Sunday, or whatever service you would attend. Come here. Why? Let's pray together for this country. Let us not just pray for tonight. Let's pray every Sunday. Let's really commit ourselves to pray to see a great change in this country that God would turn this right side up. Amen? Amen. And number two, pray that God would speak to you on where you can be a contribution to this work. Maybe God would speak to you to join Uplift. Maybe God would speak to you to, to be part of Rescue Kabatan. Or maybe God would want you to be part of Sipag. Or maybe uh, you, God wants you to be part of Biai or whatever ministry that you feel you can be a great contribution for the change of this nation. Friends, if you and I will not pray for this nation, who else will do the praying for us? Nobody else. Just tell the person, you are the hope of this nation. Your prayer, our prayer as a church. God bless us all. So last night, we had the um, privilege of praying for uh, one of our top government officials. But tonight, being a time of prayer for the nation, we have uh, a, the same privilege of praying for several more, many more people who represent the uh, people in public service. Now, just before, we, uh, just before we go into prayer, I'd just like to remind all of us the reason why we pray for the nation and for our officials. Um, as Pastor Bong reminded us, uh, in 1 Timothy, we're told to pray for kings and for all who are in authority. And your desire, my desire, is to see a nation of peace, a nation of prosperity. And Pastor Bong reminded us that the hope of the nation is in the prayers of God's people. But you know what? Lest that get to our heads and cause us to have a sense of pride, the Bible also tells us that God's people, those people who are called by God's name, must humble themselves. We need to humble ourselves in the presence of God and pray and seek His face and turn from our wicked ways. Not the, not the world turning away from its wicked ways, but God's people because we offend God as well in our dissension, in our factions, in our refusal to forgive people, and we need to repent of that and humble ourselves. But anyway, it is in that context that you and I are to come to God in prayer for the nation. I'll ask the pastors to join me here on stage. Uh, Pastor JP will help us welcome our guests for this evening, and our senior Pastor Peter will be praying for them. Good evening. As we had the privilege of praying for General Bato last night and several other officers, again tonight we are graced by the presence of people whom God has placed as authorities over us. 
So we would like to invite the following officers on stage so we may pray for you. From the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we have Commodore Samuel Z. Felix. May we ask you on stage, sir. And also Brigadier General Henry Makalalad on stage, sir. And likewise, Brigadier General Archimedes H. Viaje. And from the Philippine National Police, may I ask on stage, Police Senior Superintendent Abelardo C. Matiliano. There are several other officers here with us, and we are likewise requesting them to join us on stage as we pray for the generals here. We would also like to pray for you. So kindly, stand up and join us here on stage. Please. It is, of course, God's desire not simply to pray for those who are in military service, but anybody in government office. And if you are working as a public servant, also God has called you to be our authority serving the nation. So if you are, can we ask you to kindly rise and be acknowledged as well? Please stand. Please remain standing. Please remain standing. And as we pray for the generals, we shall likewise pray for you. Please, please remain standing. If you are working with the government, whatever office, stand up. And those who are near, as we pray, just uh, stand up. And why don't you all, yeah, just place your hand around the government officials who are here. You know, I, I did not realize we have many government officials, even congressmen, even uh, high officials. So... Just stand up wherever you are. We, we want to pray for you. So everybody, raise your right hand. Let's pray for the military officers that God will grant them wisdom, grace, and protection. Is that okay with all of you? Okay. Father God in heaven, we come before you. We lift up to you all of the military officers who are here. Lord, you have anointed them. You have placed them in positions. Will you cause them to always remember they are serving you, first of all, and that it is through them that your will will be done on earth. So grant them the realization that they are no ordinary officers, but they are your representatives. I pray for their families. I pray for their career. I pray for their individual health, for their protection. And Lord, will you bless this group of men and women so that whatever you do in their lives, they will give you the glory and the praise. Use them mightily to transform this country. And Lord, if they feel discouraged, because no one seems to be acknowledging their sacrifices, their honesty. And should they be tempted to compromise, Lord, remind them that payday is not yet always Friday. Payday is not yet, is not always in this lifetime. But above all, Lord, you are the one who will reward each one of them. So I pray, encourage them, bless them, and use them mightily in the years to come. And we also pray for the civilians who are in the government offices. Lord, as they are standing up, will you encourage them likewise that they, that they are your representative in the government. Cause them to do their job diligently. And I pray for all of us who may not be in government, that we will always com be committed to pray for our country. Together, tonight, we are reminded to pray for our president, to pray for our vice president, to pray for our chief justice, 
to pray for our senators, to pray for our congressmen. We lift them all up to you, that they will not just be politicians, but more than that, they will be your servants. And Lord, sometimes we don't even know how to solve our problem. Sometimes our problems are so complicated. But Father, I thank you. As Pastor Bong has reminded us, you are our great Heavenly Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Nothing is impossible with you and that you love us. So we commit to you, our country, our people, and all of the men who are standing here today. Will you give them special anointing, special blessing, special wisdom, special protection for your glory and for your honor. We pray all of this in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Amen.